Well, let's start. Um, start with the beginning, I guess. Where were you born? Where was I born? Where I were you born? born? I was born in Hammond, Louisiana, at North Oaks Hospital. North? What? Have you been back to North Oaks Hospital since then? Yeah, yeah. My dad had, he he gets heart attacks a lot. So. Do you know what room you were born in? No. So oh, you. I, I think they. You're not in the newborn since. ward a lot. No, no, not most of the people where I'm from. They go to St. Tammany Parish to uh, give birth. Hmm have their babies. But you, know? you were you were the exception. You got I've, born I've definitely been like we're waiting for my friend's baby mama to give birth and we're in there playing Madden. <laughs> you bring Madden or yeah, do they yeah, have yeah. like... Well we're like 19 years old, 20 years old we brought Madden because we were going to be there a while. <laughs> they brought Madden. They brought it. I didn't. I brought weed. Yeah. Oh damn. You were smoking weed in the in the waiting we room? We went outside. There's, there's this one place called uh, Lakeview, and it has like one of the ponds with the ducks. Oh so man! Going out there, so you're tailgating. Yeah, because we were getting kicked out by the nurses a lot. You know, those maternity ward nurses don't play. Mm mm. Not around her babies. You could, be, you could be just sitting in there talking like this, and like, y'all are being too loud, and then they come and yell at you. That or they do the the little bitchy whisper. Dude, I would probably be bitchy too if my job were to take care of a bunch of babies and all the babies are sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> and like Think one baby's now, a lot. I probably do have a, a little bit more empathy, em- empathy for the maternal ward nurses, just because like we're in there playing Xbox and we don't even know. Like she probably just yeah saw a dead baby. Yeah, that's and, real. And we're, Damn, we're over there having fun, and she's like, "I saw two dead babies today." <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, you ruined your day. Yeah, that was the worst part of her day was seeing the teenagers not. The dead people. Yeah, well, I mean, like, she's just like, there's serious things going on right now. Like, yeah. You're, you're cutting up. You're 19 year old. This baby, <laughs> yeah, this baby that y'all are waiting This on random is fucking high school like, yeah. girl. Yeah. Damn, how's the baby doing now? She's great. She's like five or so, I guess. I don't really talk to her dad that much anymore. It's just like when friends, like, we didn't, like, if I saw him today, we'd pick up where we left off, but like, we just don't really talk that much. I mean, he had, he had two more kids after that, so he's pretty busy trying his best to be a dad, and I understand that. And I'm doing my best to be a yeah. comedian, and part of that's being pretty selfish as far as your free time. He should sign his daughter up for football. He said before she was born, when he found out it was a girl, he's like, she's going to be a lesbian. That's what he said. She's going to be a lesbian that plays Madden all day. No, he said she's going to be good at basketball. She's going to beat up <laughs> dudes. And like she can't, like she's older now. She developed a little bit of personality. She is mean, dude. She is mean. So she's she's one step of the way there. Yeah, she is mean. She's she's definitely fighting. Do you think? Do you think she was destined to be a, a rude lesbian, or do you think that that's something that her parents thrust you upon know, her? He's got a couple family members that are uh, homosexual in different ways, lesbian or gay or whatever, and. Uh, it, could, it definitely runs in the gene pool, and I think the baby mama might have some of that, too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because if you're born with it, it's definitely a genetic trait, yeah. I would guess. And uh, Gay dynasties. Yeah. Sometimes, like, what your ancestors did in the past is still in your DNA. That's real. So, like... Damn. Uh, genetic memory. Yeah. You know, the traumatic experiences. Yeah, when you channel your ancestors... Yeah, I'm feeling that little potato famine. Shiver up, little yeah. hunger pang, shiver up my spine. I was thinking about the ancestors on the way up here, dude. Dude, I was thinking about them. Miss I've, them. I've read into my family history a little bit, and then they got kicked out of their land in Scotland that they were gifted by the king because they wanted to be Presbyterian, and they fought against it. Whoa. They so they got gifted land by the king. Yeah. And then were run out of that land. By the king, yeah, because they wanted to be Presbyterian. By the same king? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, so they all moved to Ireland. So I'm Irish and Scottish. Damn. I'm just as white as it gets. Dude, you were like like a a displaced peasant. 
Yeah, you, it, if you watch like those ancestry shows, you see a lot of if they come from Scotland or Ireland, at some point one of them moved to the other. Yeah. So you were like you were living pretty well for a couple of years there, before like they turned on you. Yeah, dude. dude yeah. So, like you had land, you know. Yeah. That was like the Grimmett in Scotland. Dude, it's land is like have, owning a Tesla these days. Like, yeah, I don't own land. But I was thinking about that. Yeah, man. I was like, I was like, damn, I've got warrior blood. Yeah. <laughs> they fought. But they lost us. They so got loser blood too. Nah, you got fighter blood. Fighter. Blood. They got uh. <laughs> Dude, they got they got all kinds of people, man. You ever like meet someone and then find out their like ancestry it was like super crazy and they're like that makes sense, like. But yeah, well, one of my best buddies like found out his dad wasn't his dad when he was like fifteen. That guy knew the whole time, but still treating him like his blood son and stuff. But, That's pretty dope of him. That's like better yeah. than like no dad. No, definitely. Well, he, he ended up getting another stepdad, too. But, Damn. But all of them have been great to him. Dude. For sure. That Somehow, was pretty cool, that guy to step up. Sometimes you start with no dads and you end up with two. Well, he's got three. Damn. Because he's got another dad that's real, his real dad. No, that's just ridiculous. That's too many dads. That's too many dads. Well, actually, it's not too many dads. I think three, yeah, I think three dads is the perfect amount of dads. Shout out to Three seven. Dads Improv Troop. Um... <laughs> Three dads, two of my favorite improv comedians out in L.A. Check them out. Is that really? A th- That's a real improv troupe in uh, in L.A. Three dads. I don't really follow improv that much. I remember at church camp they had this Christian improv group. It was like three, two, one improv or something. Ooh. Like that. Yeah, that's good. And they would they would they would do stuff at the church camp for us, and it was it was decently funny, but like I don't know. I mean, I get improv. I feel like I need to practice it, especially. Yeah. With, like, if I'm wanting to be in sketches or eventually, like, movies and stuff one day, it's definitely something to... It's definitely, like, a useful skill, but it's also the cringiest group of people you'll ever meet. Yeah. That's it's, the thing. Not not that I think, like, all improv people are cringy. I think it's just cringy to be in improv. Like, you gotta do it. Yeah. You gotta in- embrace the, the cringe aspect of, like, improv comedy. Because you're just, like... Yeah, you know, it's just, just like, like being the guy that goes and sits in the sauna every day. I, yeah, I used to do that. I used to go sit in the sauna every day, and my like all day, I'd be like, "Dude, I feel so good. I went and sat in the sauna. I feel great." And I'll talk about it all the time, and I'm sure people are like, "Dude, fuck off." <laughs> and I was paying like a hundred dollars a month for a gym membership just to go sit in the sauna. I mean, I'd go work out, but like, I really got that gym membership because of the sauna. I know the gym you're talking about, Club Four. Well, no, this place is in uh, Hammond. It's called uh, North Cypress. There's a Club Four that has a, a sauna. And I'm, like, kind of obsessed with it. Like, go, working out and then sitting in a sauna for 15 minutes, just, like, you just feel like you're like a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Like so a like, gorilla by, like, a bat. A couple like, of years after my dad got out of prison and he started building himself back up, he got us this, like, summer membership at this place called Stone Creek in uh, Mandeville. Or Co- I think it's Covington, maybe Mandeville. Should we turn off and the TV? Has that TV know, been on the whole time? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I hit my head on my shotgun. Not the gun. <laughs> Not the fucking gun. Yes, we are armed at this point. Yeah, dude, this is definitely going to trigger Google's, like, anti algorithm It's got the orange tip. It's not for killing people in a political rage. Oh, great. It was also playing, like, copyrighted music in the background the whole time. We're really good at podcasting. This is great. Like, um, yeah, so we got that membership to Stone Creek, and you really weren't supposed to go in the locker room unless you were 15, and I was maybe, like, 13. My older brother was 15. Because, I mean, obviously, it's just, like, old men with small birds in there, like, just walking around naked. But they had the cool plunge, a hot tub, a sauna, a steam room. What's the cool plunge? So it's just like water that's like 38 degrees. Oh. And it's constantly running and you just go sit in that. What? That's something that Joe Rogan does every morning. That's incredible. I want to do that. Yeah, Joe Rogan does that every morning for three minutes in like 38 degree water, I think he said, or 34. Oh, I have a big barrel in my backyard. I was thinking about like... Just filling it up with rainwater, filling it up with ice, and just doing like a like a cold sit mm-hmm. for like a few minutes. 
That's something I they really They say it's better than, like, any cup of coffee or Adderall. Dude, it's the best I thing. Have. I have a cousin that's a, that's a daredevil, like a extreme thrill, thrill seeker. Yeah. He, uh, he goes skydiving, or at least he used to. When I met him, he was on, a, like, a three-month streak of going skydiving every single morning. Instead of drinking coffee, he would go skydive. He would, like, wake up early, wake up before the sunrise, go fucking fuel the jets, go ride, go hit a skydive, do some flips, and then open his parachute, land, go home and sell real estate. I feel like that's way more expensive than coffee, and people spend a lot of money on coffee. (laughs) I think... I mean, he. But that's his dig, though. Yeah, I mean, that's his dig. Yeah, that's like, his dig. That's what he likes to do. Some people like to drink coffee. Some people stay out at the clubs till like 1 a.m. Some people like pop Molly. Dude, I feel like jumping out of the sky is like yeah. just as much of a drug. Yeah, I think maybe you could like jump off your bed in the morning and you would get just as much of a wake up. Yeah, if you had like just a. Just land like on your elbows. I was thinking of like waking up falling. Yeah. Like you have like a, a mattress tilter. Yeah. And maybe it and drops like, you oh. into a little you, bed underneath your bed. What it is, it drops you on the floor and then it just like, and then you just do push-ups. And that's your morning workout. It'd have to be something pretty aggressive. Like if, yeah. If, if, to wake me up. I'm a pretty deep, deep sleeper. Like, yeah. But what if you like... What if you woke yourself up in the morning by just, like, as soon as you get consciousness, you step out of bed and do a deadlift? That's, like, do a new PB deadlift. Yeah. Just, like, because we don't know the effects of, like, sleep, I guess. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, you would be awake after that. You'd be like, ah, what are we doing? Could you go, like, pee before you do the deadlift? No, it has to be the first you thing you do in the morning. And it's like, you gotta go, get, yeah. you gotta go. You, you gotta channel that energy into when you're, yeah. into when you're lifting. And if you pee a little on the mat, that's what the, that's what the cleaning spray's for, you know? Yeah, it's just like, it's easier when you don't have to clean up. Yeah, but I think to maximize your, your productivity output... Yeah. You have to be lifting from minute one that you're awake. What if there was some kind of like, like this gel, almost like a water bed, and when it's time for you to wake up, it sucks you down into the gel. It's like real freezing, like Avatar. And it like suffocates you. You have to fight your way out. Yeah. It or is it? Be a or is it relaxing? Cold. It's more like a shock to the body. It's like real cold or something. Ooh, like an ice mattress. Yeah. Some kind of weird. Name. It like uh, almost like uh, how they were frozen on Austin Powers when they come about the goo during the defrosting. Process. I do know that, yeah. Or like um, maybe something like that, like Matrix style goo mm-hmm. that just gets dumped on your head in the morning, like a very thick liquid. Dude, I used to love watching Austin Powers. Dude. My which my parents didn't my dad probably showed me Austin Powers before I ever found it but young age watching Austin Powers just like the different little jokes they have in there and then you get older and you find more dude it's crazy that you just pulled out a vape just now because I'm trying so hard to quit right now I know you are dude. I'm the not last, gonna let the you the last three times I've been around you you've been talking about I even asked you last time I was like how's the no nicotine going so how is it going Man, I can't lie on a podcast. No, you gotta be true. I smoked a cig this morning. Cig's That's not real. bad, though. That's not something you're going to get. Yeah, I'm not getting another vape. I'm to. not, I can't let myself do that. I have to, like, if I'm going to smoke, I'm going to kill my lungs the old-fashioned way. Step outside and just fucking be, a, be annoyed. American Spirits, I'm assuming, is that the one of the cigs that you ripped? Those belong to our tech guy. Uh, But yeah, I have. I was about to say, if you were smoking the American Spirits, then you're not you're not torturing your lungs enough. Yeah, American Spirits are like the the Honda Civic of cigarettes. Yeah, you know, my buddy Thomas, we used to our our 
figure out what kind of science it was, like natural science. It's some dumb science we had to take our senior year to graduate. And she made us do like an ecosystem in like a box type thing and describe or how it works. And me and Thomas are like, we're going to do the marshlands, but we're going to flood the marshlands with a volcano. So for like, she gave us the assignment like four weeks before finals because it was our final. So for four weeks every day, we'd be like, Ms. Nagin, we got to go dig up more dirt for our box. <laughs> and we'd just go out in the woods and go smoke American spirits. That's good. What, did you get an A on the project? Oh, yeah, dude. She was one of the teachers, like, we would, me and Thomas, we'd be in the back of class, and he would, like, look up, like, where to buy cocaine on the dark web, and he'd show it to her. He'd be like, look, Miss Nagum, you can buy cocaine on the internet. That's cool. Yeah, she was like, don't she do was, that. Like, she was like, don't show me that. You can't show me that. But she knew. She knew how to get cocaine. Yeah. She knew how to party. But, uh. <laughs> she was pregnant, actually, so. She oh, dude. She might have been out of the game. Dude, babies can get born addicted. It's true. You gotta rub some, just rub some on their gums. They'll be all right. And, and they were there too. I uh, they were in school. I did a uh, a project, not for any school project, just in my free time. I had this giant glass jar, and there was this pond, out behind my apartment complex. So I went out behind the pond, and I scooped up a big thing of pond scum, and I put the lid back on. I cleaned it off, and I put it on a shelf in my house where it got like sunlight every day Mm -hmm. and I waited for like the water to clear and there was like crabs and like little snails and a bunch of like cool little stuff in it there's a lot of TikToks of people doing that now where they'll like seal jars with like life inside oh yeah but yeah I would watch like the the swarms of critters go around and I kept that thing for like over two years yeah and it had a snail living in it we had two stock ponds in the yard and and so so my dad went to prison right yeah the reason he went to prison is because he was making too much money for what he was doing. And Word. So Laundering. I, I, no, he was... Uh, uh, one of my friends said one time, he said, your dad went to prison for selling wheelchairs. But he had a home health business, and he was friends with a doctor from when he was a respiratory therapist. And my dad was making a lot of money, and it was because him and the doctor had this thing where the doctor was qualifying people on Medicare for his home health services that might not have necessarily needed it as much as they needed it. Whoa. So it was Medicare fraud. So when you start messing Whoa. with like the big people's Medicare fraud, like Medicare, like their money and stuff. Yeah. They don't, they don't like that so they come for you. So there were what, they, like represent, like recommending too many wheelchairs or like? Different things, yeah. Uh, Whoa. Like home oxygen and and wheelchairs and like the recliners that stand all the way up things like that whoa so they just like ordered a bunch of extra and kept them in a warehouse or would they no, like sell them to the sto- old people my dad had a store and for the most part it was pretty clean and my, and my dad made a lot of his money off of investments gotcha he made a lot of his money off of that it just helped to get some just like helped a, to have some from my, and this is some underground they Medicare never money. explained this to me this is all like what I took from it yeah you know what I mean yeah and uh but anyways, after, or no, where was I going with that? Where was I going with my dad being in prison for? Oh, we're talking about the, the extra wheelchairs and the the Medicare. Oh, yeah, we were talking about putting stuff in jars. That's and right. stocks. So anyways, <laughs> we, had a, we had a 13 acre yard and we had two stock ponds mm-hmm. with bass and perch in them. And we had a baseball field there too, so we, our little league teams could practice baseball there. And so after baseball practice, me and a couple of kids on my team, we would just like, get in our shorts and we would walk through the pond and grab as many minnows and stuff as we could and we'd put them in a jar and we'd just go sit them up by the house and we'd never mess with it again. You just let them die? Yeah, they would die, mostly. Yeah. There was a, a pond outside my grandma's house that had like four koi fish in it, mm-hmm. but it was like me and a bunch of different cousins at my grandma's house. So obviously the cool thing to do was to jump into the pond and try to catch the koi fish with your hands. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know, a couple weeks of us just like, that was our game to like jump into the pond, grab a koi fish and like hold it up and then let it back go. And eventually, we didn't know this at the time, but the koi fish got really stressed out about that. And eventually they all <laughs> just died. They all got st- they, I mean, we were just touching them with our, like, gross hands. All day, yeah. yeah, we probably gave them worms. Like, we probably had some shit under our fingernails that was, like, not good for them. 
me and, me and my cousin killed this tree that was like purposefully placed in my grandparents' backyard just as like a shade area, plus like an aesthetic type thing. <laughs> yeah. And we went back there. A tree day, that was supposed to be there. Yeah, with like an axe. And we were just like, just like, like it. George Washington and the cherry tree. We didn't chop it down, but we chopped it good enough to where it, it killed it. Damn. And it came rid of the tree. You're like, like, yeah. I was pissed. I remember, like, yeah, I remember, like, realizing, like, oh, yeah, I can just, like, hit this thing with my axe as long as I want, and nothing's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And then you come back later, and it's a dead fucking tree. Yeah. I was like, man, trees don't die that easy. They do. They do. Unless you find, in my yard, we had live oats. And and so like you could you could hit those a couple times. Yeah, like, you can. Right. You can knock down a live oak. Yeah, easy. but I would never go chopping at those. My dad like I knew he liked those too much. He has yeah. a live oak tattooed on his back. So That's I knew cool. like I knew like don't mess with. Them. Does it sprawl across his whole back, or is it like no a no, no? It's like right here at the top, kind of. Because live oaks, you know the, the yeah, branch, it's like really wide. It's like from the top to like the bottom like that big on the back of his neck and then it's got words underneath it what's the word say I don't, I don't do you know. have any tattoos yeah I got Poseidon oh, on yeah? my chest and it looks terrible I've got an anchor on my arm it's very sea themed shit. yeah Oceanic. that's what it, well that's why I got Poseidon because I got the anchor tattoo because for some reason I thought I was going to join the coast guard out of high school and so I went ahead and got the anchor plus I mean it would look cool or whatever in my mind I was 17 yeah, it, it would look cool no matter what. So I got that one, and then I got one on my leg, uh, for my friend that died. Was it a stick boat? No, all of them are. I also have one on my leg for my friend, but he didn't die. He went to jail. I've got another one for my friend group in high school. Uh, my drinking group. We all my friend's stepdad had like tattoo machines, and on each of our right ass cheeks, the word Joe's. Joe's, there, yeah. Like, is that does that mean anything? As, yeah. Or does it just oh, mean I'll tell you when I get back from the bathroom. I'll oh, yeah. Bathroom. And this is a real rookie move, and this won't happen ever again, guys. We're gonna take this time to do an ad read. Um, yeah. Tell them what McDonald's wanted us to say for a Mc, million dollars. Dude, McDonald's wanted us to admit uh, to basically. So McDonald's came to us. I'll start from the beginning. McDonald's came to us with an offer. It was um, a very lucrative offer for an ad deal on this show. However, it required a stipulation that we would both have to um, confess to a string of recent murders that are going to come out in the next couple of days. And I'm just letting you know that we're not going to confess to those murders. The McDonald's Corporation has a lot of covering up to do. That's all I'm going to say about that. But... Um, you know, we're not going to take the fall. And if I show up dead in the next couple days, please use this podcast as evidence in court that, uh, you know, those families deserve to know the truth. That's all I'll say about that. Um, but yeah, enjoy the show. We're going to do it. We're going to do a cut right here. Can you fucking see <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm fiending. Your, um, your bodily functions reminded me that I'm kind of hungry. Are we, uh, could we order pizza live on the podcast? We can. We can do that? Let's do that. Yeah, man. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of, this is a good opportunity to say, like, uh, are you picky eater? No. Are you, uh, no, not really, especially when it comes to pizza. Any, toppings. any dietary uh, restrictions? No, I have been noticing that, and it, that ice cream has been fucking me up lately. Though ice cream has been fucking me up. I've had some pretty awful poops the last couple of days, but thankfully that's coming to an end. And uh, yeah, I work at an ice cream shop, and uh, oh damn, so you. You yeah, know. dude, so it's really hard to not go in and make a chocolate malt every day with a different added flavor. I've been uh, actually trying to uh, gain more weight, so I've been eating protein shakes, and those are not great for my tummy. Yeah. Yeah, you have to get used to things like that, all that protein, because your gut's not used to I like to drink them right before bed, so I always wake <laughs> up at like 3 in the morning with like... 
I have to like get up and go to the bathroom and I like take a dump. Yeah. Then I, you know, Do you put my stuff on, get back in bed, and immediately as soon as I lay down, have to go again. And it's like, and I just do that like three or four times. Yeah. And it hurts more every time. Them premier protein shakes are good little late night snacks. Yeah. Good little late night sweet treat. It doesn't feel as bad. Yeah, because you're at least getting like, protein it's like, out of oh, it. It's protein, but you're just drinking chocolate milk. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Chocolate milk with a little bit of extra like rice flour in it. Yeah. <laughs> Creatine. Oh, dude. So. Obviously, you know what a yuhu is, but do you remember Chocolate Soldiers? I don't remember. I've never heard of Chocolate Soldiers. The chocolate Soldiers. I'm looking that up right now. A chocolate drink, almost entirely the same thing as yuhu, except it was is it better? a little bit richer. Oh. And they were fantastic. A yuhu is already pretty rich. Yeah. Now, do you prefer yuhu in the box or yuhu out the bottle? You know, I haven't had either in so long. That I would be down to do a live yuhu tasting. We'll do a yuhu tasting next time. We can do a YouTube tasting. Yeah, we'll do yuhu tastings next time. But and if someone can get their hands on some chocolate soldiers, uh, hit me up at Crockett McKelvin Comedy on Instagram. Chocolate. And, uh, we'll set up some Whoa. shipping information. Maybe these look crazy. Time. Yeah, send him some chocolate soldiers. That the all these cans look really old. It's really weird that there's, like, those regional things that people have, too. Like, my friend I was talking about earlier with Three Dads, he's from, like, his mom's from Kentucky, and he grew up in, like, Virginia and Illinois. He was born in San Diego because uh, she was in the Navy, so they were always moving around. And uh, in Kentucky, they have something called AL8. L8? Yeah, it's like a gym. Like a V8? No, AL8. A-L-E. A-L-E. And then the number 8. A L eight one ginger ale, whoa! It's fantastic. A L eight. It's better than like Canada Dry or any of that other stuff. Whoa! It's so good. That looks like that. Just look at that label. It's so crisp. It's a. It just looks crisp. The it's, logo. It, it kind of looks design. like like a mix of Bucky's and Mountain Dew. Bucky's. Yeah, you got to get that mug out the can. Dude, the my can hometown's the getting the Bucky's. Your hometown's getting My hometown is getting a Bucky's. We're moving up in the world. We just got a Taco Bell like five years ago. Oh, hell yeah. We got a Taco Bell last year. Dude, Taco Bell is moving out. A new wave of new wave of franchises. Me and my dad have actually, we watch a show together sometimes called Food That Built America. Yeah. And uh, they were doing something. On, it was an episode of Taco Bell and Arby's, like the way it started. Whoa. Yeah. Together? Yeah. They started and together? You know why he did it the like the way he did it was? Like the reason it's the ground beef is because it's supposed to be just like a semi flip on a hamburger. That's why he puts the lettuce, cheddar, cheese, and tomatoes on the taco. Oh because that's it's basically just hamburger ingredients. Yeah. Ground up and put into a taco. And his brother would never eat tacos because he said they were too spicy. So he just took the a recipe down to the chili pepper, pa- paprika, and uh, garlic. That makes sense. Why I always go through uh, so much Diablo sauce. Yeah, and he right. really made he really made a a good chunk of change for himself. You know, there's oh, only seventy eight hundred. Stores all over the world, though Taco Bell. Seven thousand eight hundred. Yeah, that only seven thousand eight hundred. I feel like there's way more than that. We are in the fucking. I mean, there's none in Mexico. There's none in like any Spanish-speaking countries. Really? Yeah, because it's like such an Americanized thing that it's like to a Mexican person, it's like, what the fuck is this? Like, I'll just go get a burger. Like, yeah, I've never been a big Taco Bell. For some reason, uh. Because we had got a Mexican restaurant, and that's all anybody would ever go to in my small town. Yeah. And uh, Mexican restaurants are the shit. They had, they had one new Mexican restaurant running in town, and I mean, it's branched out now. It's great. Don Juan's. Uh, and I was about to say about it. Oh, yeah. Everybody would want to go to it, like, before junior high dances and stuff. Yeah. And everybody just wanted to eat there all the time. And I was like, I hate, ta- I hate Mexican food. That's what I, I, I stood <laughs> on that for like four years. I've got, I've got that genetic from my dad where I can like make a bold faced lie and keep my word to it for <laughs> that long. That you just don't like it? Yeah, that I didn't like it. I love it now. 
I love it now, but for a while, I'd say, like, I don't like Mexican food, so we didn't have to go to Don Juan's. Cause every, every oh, because everyone like, was always going to Don Juan's. We were always going to Don Juan's. Like, bro, let's go get some fried chicken. We've got so many small town fried chicken spots that you can get the fried chicken, the fried fish, the fried shrimp. You can get po' boy. They've got a salad bar. Why are we going to the Mexican restaurant? You're making me hungry, my Where man. they're making small town beans and rice. How do you feel about Wingstop as a corporation or as a meal? <laughs> Okay, so the Korean barbecue ones are good, and they have good flavors. I just don't like that it says your order will be ready in 25 minutes, and you get there, after, like you time it out to where you're there at 25 minutes. I mean, you just walk in, get your shit, and leave. Yeah. And you sit there another 30 minutes, and then you get all your stuff, and... I don't know, do they bake everything there? They don't fry it? Like, the fries are always soggy. They are soggy fries. fries. And also, like, service-wise, I feel like I'm walking into a DMV whenever I go to Wingstop. Yeah, and because it's, like, fast food-esque, I don't ever get, like, the bone-in wings there. I always get the boneless. I always get the bone-in wings, and the bone-in wings are pretty nice. I'm a bone-in I do I'm a feel bone-in like... guy, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I don't like boneless more. I lo- like, sometimes, like, I think especially when I was getting it, they had a deal on, like, an 18-piece boneless or something like that, Ooh. and I was just so poor. You know, so you gotta get the boneless. You gotta get the deals. Yeah. I felt that. I, uh... You ever go to a drive through so much that you're, like, can't put a drink in your cup holder because it's always full of cups from the restaurant that you're at right now? Yeah. And you gotta like you're like oh fuck I've really gone to McDonald's like three times in the past three days. Yeah, I was about to say literally like two days ago I went to McDonald's and got my food and when I grabbed the bag and put it in the passenger seat I sat it right next to another McDonald's bag that had the exact same order in it the day before and I sat my coat next to the cup. Dude, just another that another brick in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I've had them collect before, too, man. I've had a couple of them oh, yeah. before, and it's like... You gotta get them out, though. I've learned that. You gotta get them out. You gotta get them out of there. If you let your car build up, get some help. Yeah, uh, I, I do I do bad on the uh, not washing it all the time. If you live in Hawaii and have a dirty car called Joey Love, get your car detailed... Tell him Cameron sent you from his podcast. Get those get those food bags out of your car. Get those fries out from between the seats. Um, what you island, know, though? Oahu. So Oahu. If you live in Honolulu, or, you know, if you live in Oahu, Honolulu County. Is Oahu you know, the big island? Is that what that Oahu is? Oahu is not the big island. Oahu is one of the medium islands, but it's got a natural port. So uh, America really clinched onto it during World War II. Yeah, so that's the one that really, like, it's all the tourist destinations. It's where all the military stuff is. Yeah, you know, I don't remember the details, but I do remember learning that, like, one of the most insignificant presidents, when he comes to your name, besides you just know he died in the bathtub, did, Taft. like, some of the, yeah, he did, like, some of the most fucked up stuff. Yeah, he did, uh... Um, he took over, like, like the Philippines, maybe? Yeah, we, we put uh we put the Hawaiian uh leader on house arrest until she died and then took her country by force. There we go. So we did a pretty good like clue. That. You know, free Hawaii. Yeah, man. I think oh I mean like now that we've like systematically made it to where like the only way they'll survive is through being involved in our trade unless they get involved in trade with China, which Yeah. I mean but, we destroyed so much of their ecosystem, too, that it's, like, not going to produce enough food for everyone there. You know what's crazy? They don't have any, like, predatory mammals over there. Either. They do now. They got mongooses. They got mongooses Mongooses now? came from New Zealand. Yeah, but mongooses aren't going to kill all Not the, from like, New Zealand, but... Deer and hogs they have. They do have hogs. They have crazy hogs and deer. People bring deer and stuff over there. We like, need to bring wolves to Hawaii. Wolves or lions? Jaguars? Ooh, a jaguar, jaguar. would do well. Yeah, release them in the the mountains so that they can get populous and then come down. Yeah, and leave one in the cage at one of the resorts for the kids to look at. Yeah. Sad caged jaguar, the last one after they all overhunted their whole their whole land. 
Yeah, I saw a thing on Twitter the other day, and it was a video of a snow leopard, and it said uh, there's only like seven thousand eight hundred more left in the wild, Dude, or something, like, or maybe like four thousand something. And I was like, is that low? Like, do we yeah. need that many? We should treat more it. More killing machines. We should, we need to take like the 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 sum, the snow leopard or whatever you were talking about, and turn it into like the next NFT craze. It's so where people are hoarding as many snow leopards as they can, mm-hmm. and then, like, killing off extra snow leopards to, like, raise the price of theirs. You know what you do? You buy all the snow leopards, and then you do a collaboration sneaker with Travis Scott. Ooh! So you own all the leopards. And it's all... And, yeah, and the only way to make this shoe is with snow 100% leopard. genuine snow leopard for Travis Scott Nike Dunks. Yeah. Yeah, I would buy those. I would buy those. I would do. A lot of people would. I think oh, dude, man. You know, the little Nas X shoe with the blood in it, those were pretty cool. Do you think it was his blood? I don't know whose blood it was. I, I, it had, I thought it couldn't have been real cool. blood. Right? I, I think it was. But what, it wasn't The FDA like, would have a fit. The thing is, is like it wasn't Nike actually doing it. <coughs> like oh, somebody what? took a pair oh, of Nikes and thing? they were like making them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nike doesn't have to do with that. Yeah, should we uh making custom shoes? Should we wrap up the podcast here? Yeah, we can definitely wrap up. I feel like we've been going for a good amount of time. I think by now we should have a good name for it. So we're gonna and I think you no, know, we've been thinking about it this whole time, and I know we're we're synced up on this. So we're gonna say the name of our podcast on three. <sighs> no. <sighs> All right, you ready? <laughs> we're gonna come up with it. We're gonna be in sync, and we're gonna. We're gonna have it. Should we at least know like what's the first letter? So we can No, nah, nothing know. like that. No just psychic link. No pressure. We're just capturing lightning in a bottle right here. I feel like so. I need to look in your eyes for this. Yeah, so we can like make eye contact. Alright, you ready? It's gonna be based on the things we've talked about today. Based on the things we've talked about today. Yeah. You ready? Let's go. Alright, ready? One, two, two three. Kids Jaguar shoes. <laughs> kids in the corner? Yeah, kids in the corner. Kids in the corner! Jaguar shoes is something different. We're gonna do... We're gonna get a painting of, like, Jaguar shoes. Yeah. And we're gonna put that on the logo for kids in the corner. It's a kids in the corner modcast. I've been Cameron Ladner. I'm Crockett McKelvin. We'll see you later. How the fuck do we end this thing? Oh, uh, you just gotta stop recording on the, on the thingy. No, sir.